Hello, and welcome to Android Design in Action. This is our first episode of this brand new show. Uh, my name is Roman Nurek um, from the Android Developer Relations team. Uh, we are broadcasting here from New York City. We're also joined by uh, Nick Butcher, who is, I guess, to my screen left. Um, and he's coming from London. Nick, you want to say hi? Hi, good to be here. Um, and we also have a special guest uh, in the back, uh, Adam Kosh, also from the New York Android Developer Relations team. Um, and he is producing the show today. Uh, he'll be providing some color commentary here and there as he sees appropriate. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the team kicking off this very first Android design in action. Um, now, I'm guessing many of you don't really know much about the show since this is our first time and we haven't really talked much about it. Um, very briefly, I just want to talk about the brief history. Uh, so many of you are already followers of the, uh, the Friday App Clinic. Um, and in that app clinic, uh, some of our teammates, including Rado Meyer, Daniel Pham, and Ian Lewis, uh, they look at apps that are nominated uh, to the team through Google Moderator. They look at those apps and they inspect ways in which they can um, you know, improve the apps. Uh, they look at you know, what potentially could be uh, fixed, what, uh, what the apps do wrong, uh, things like that. And so this, uh, this show is basically a spin-off show kind of, uh, to look at the design, specifically look at the visual and interaction design aspects of some of these apps and see how those can be improved. So um, today, uh, in this first show, uh, we're going to look at three apps uh, from the, uh, the Friday App Clinic. We're going to look at um, the London Underground app, the London Bus Checker app, and M Parking. Um, and we're going to look at those uh, specific screens from those apps and look at how we can kind of reimagine or rework them to better follow our guidelines uh, from the Android design site, um, and in general, how to just overall improve the design of the apps. Um, so with that, let's get started. Let's look at the very first app. Um, we're going to switch to the demo here. And you, you can see that we're using a fancy little setup using a Dropbox, uh, thanks to the developers of the Dropbox app. Um, we're going to look at the very first app, which is London Underground. So, um, you know, this is uh, actually one of the screens from the app. Uh, this is the live information screen. Uh, you get to, this, uh, uh, get to this screen from the top level one. Uh, there's this little icon, it's kind of like an exclamation point that gets you to the screen. Um, and it basically uh, tells you the status, the state of uh, the different lines on the underground. Uh, gives you things like access to uh, weather. Uh, if you look down here, it gives you access to weather at the very bottom. Um, and then it also tells you like the current departure boards, and then it actually even notices, and this is something that I noticed uh, checking in from uh, New York, it notices that you are uh, not actually in London, and it notices that you're in New York City, and it says, hey, you know, we actually have an app for that. We have um, a New York City version of this app available, uh, and that leads you to the Play Store to, to get that version. Um, so it's a pretty straightforward screen. Um, Nick, do you have any um, initial comments on kind of the screen's usefulness since you are, you know, coming from London. Um, you have any ideas? Yeah. On, yeah. I feel privileged you're doing two London-based apps with me here in London. Uh, I think when I look at this screen you pulled out, the first thing I think is it, it's fairly iOS styled. That's my gut reaction where you have the kind of the rounded white sections. Mm -hmm. um, that's the first thing that jumps out at me, really. They have made a, an attempt to adopt some things, like we have a, a, an action bar, although it's using some, some slightly non-standard styling within, which we'll get into later. But uh, yeah, the first thing that jumps out to me is, is the iOSness. Yeah, absolutely. And you could tell just by, you know, like you mentioned, the, the kind of rounded, grouped list items, um, and then this gray background. Um, so yeah, that's definitely kind of a, a styling from a different platform. Um, so that's one of the first things you'll notice in, in the redesign coming up. Um, one of the first things that we changed. Uh, the other thing, the, the thing that stuck out to me was, you know, there's a lot of space dedicated here to showing all the different lines, uh, all the different lines of the London Underground, for example, the Bakerloo, the Central, the Circle Line, and all of them have good service. Um, so it seems like it's just showing a lot of information that's the same. It's not really useful information seeing that everything is good service. So if I'm, say, taking the Waterloo Line, um, you'll notice here in the second screenshot, this is kind of the scroll down version. Um, if you scroll down, then you have to you know, find Waterloo and then only then see that there's minor delays. So um, I, that was one thing that struck out to me, that to see any actual, 
I guess, actionable information about the status of certain lines, you have to scroll, and that's that's kind of never a good thing. Um, also, yeah, for me, especially as a Londoner, if I'm putting out this this app and going to the live information, it's probably because I, you know, I'm heading towards a specific line, and I want to know if there's anything going on. So I want that information in, like first, but first and foremost, right at the top. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about some of the other interactional elements. So the first thing you, well, one of the first things I, the other, uh, one of the second things I guess that I noticed uh, was that there's mm -hmm. no up button, right? So this is a subsequent screen, so there should be some way of getting uh, up in the hierarchy of the app. So there's uh, there's an icon here, but there's no up caret indicating that you can go up. Um, the other thing is that the action bar has a bold title, and while that's you know sometimes okay, while that's often okay. Uh, it's a little non-standard, so it kind of takes uh, takes away some of the visual attention from the content of the screen. Um, and also, this is kind of curious. Uh, there's an update button somewhere in the middle here, um, and really, that's probably something that should be kind of like a refresh action potentially in the action bar. So, um, with that, no, on, the, yeah, go ahead. On the action, on the action bar icon, like it doesn't really come across in the screenshot, but the, the highlight is non-standard as well. So when you touch the icon, uh, the highlight behind it is kind of tall and narrow. Like there's a very, there's a very stand. Oh, nice zoom in. There's a very standard kind of um, size and shape that you would expect with these controls, and that's part of the important uh, importance of the action bar. That's very familiar to the user. So every time you kind of deviate from from that standard kind of size and shape then all of a sudden it's introducing like a cognitive kind of speed bump to users where something just feels slightly off. Yeah, absolutely. So it sounds yeah. nitpicky, but I think it really contributes to making your app feel very easy to use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the last thing I want to point out before we jump into the redesigned version is the uh, send us feedback link. Um, generally for things that are secondary, things like you know settings or, or send feedback or log out or things like that, um, we generally try to put that into the action overflow since that's really what it's for. It's for for actions that you know uh, users wouldn't really use on a on a regular basis. You know, so you know if 10% of the time, even 1% of the time, they're going to be using send us feedback. Um, you may want to just you know put that in the action overflow. So moving on, we're gonna we're uh, running a little uh, short on time, I guess, for this oh. part. Let's jump into the redesign. So this is um, a reimagined version of this screen. Um, and I'm going to quickly zoom in here. Um, so you'll notice that we've changed some of the uh, some of the colors. Um, one of the uh, things that we started with was the uh, the dark action bar theme. And uh, this isn't kind of you know something that you should do for any app, but um, it, it kind of conveys a pretty nice contrast between uh, actions and um, and the screen content. Um, also, we put weather as a second tab that you can swipe over to. Um, since weather is you know potentially something that uh, that is fairly important, um, this isn't kind of necessary, but you know it is it is a nice um, touch. Um, the other thing that you'll notice here is that we take we took that list of uh, all the different lines, the circle line, the Bakerloo line, the district line. And we collapsed it only into what the user wants to see, which is exceptions, right? Exceptions to the almost always well running London Underground. So in this case, you'll notice that. <laughs> is that true, uh, Nick? Is does the underground actually yeah. run pretty well? It's yeah, it's running great. It's running great. Awesome. So right now, I'm guessing that it, you would see no exceptions in this app. Um, but so uh, you see that you know the circle line is closed, and this is just you know uh, uh, an imaginary situation. The circle line is closed. There's uh, a little bit of iconography to indicate that on top of the um, the yellow uh, color for the circle line, um, and then minor delays on the Waterloo line. You'd see that below. Um, and you'll see that we actually use hollow styling throughout. We use these kind of standard list headings um, that have this kind of uh, all caps uh, 12 uh, SP text. Um, and then below uh, those two um, exceptions, we actually just say as, a, as kind of like an additional um, confirmation to the user that all the other lines have good service on them. Um, the other thing I'll quickly point out here is that um, for the traveling in New York City, um, I guess toast or pop-up. Uh, that's kind of an exceptional case that rarely happens, likely. So what you may want to do there is actually just show up a kind of like a bottom toast or a bottom bar that slides in and lets the user take action. Um, and if they don't really care about New York City, if I just happen to accidentally open the app in New York City, just press the X to dismiss that and never show it to them again. 
So Nick, uh, with that, you have any um, any thoughts on this? Uh, well, immediately this feels much more like at home on my on my Android device. It feels it fits in with the system look and feel using the hollow styling. Uh, I especially like the use of color. Uh, we've gone through here, so it's really made the, the personal information jump out to me. The things I care about when I'm opening the line state status is you know what is closed, what's going to be delaying my journey, and I think that these these points of the app really pop out to me now. So that's my my favorite kind of takeaway from it. Awesome. Um, the other quick things we'll point out before jumping into the next uh, next app is that there's a refresh uh, button here in the action bar to convey that you can refresh everything on the screen. Um, and that's, that's kind of the standard place to put something like a refresh on Android. Um, and then for the other piece, uh, the view departure boards uh, over here, uh, we move that as well into the action bar as, a, as an icon up top. Oh, and uh, Adam points out that we should probably mention the ad. Um, so you'll notice that in the original screen here, there's an ad at the bottom. Uh, there's nothing really preventing you from, from using that same ad in the bottom here. Uh, the only thing that really would detract from is the traveling in New York City banner. But in that case, you may want to consider, you know, uh, that's really an ad for yourself. That is effectively a house ad, right? Um, so maybe that could cover up, uh, or if that is the case, if you are traveling in New York City, hide the other ads um, and show this kind of house ad. And if, when you dismiss, maybe show the other ads. Um, so that, that's, I think, it for, for me. Uh, Nick, any parting thoughts for uh, London Underground? Yeah. Yeah, I think just um, if you take a look at this two sh shots next to each other, you can notice there's, there's much less kind of um, chrome around the content. There's, instead of using bounding boxes and different background colors to give the app structure, uh, we've used typography and um, consistent spacing uh, to, to really convey the same information in a much cleaner way, which for me makes the content pop out much more. So I think this is the, you know, this side by side really sums up the hollow design philosophy very nicely. Awesome. All right. So with that, let's move on to the next app. The next app is M Parking. Um, and so this app basically, um, I, I don't really know how to use this app because I think parking in the states works a little differently. Uh, Nick, any thoughts on on M Parking? Yeah. So um, here in London, there's a few schemes like this where you can pay for your parking fee by sending an SMS to a certain premium number. And that will, uh, you basically SMS them your vehicle registration plate, and that will kind of give you parking for a period of time. So, this app lets you set up uh, certain zones which work with this, with the, the appropriate SMS numbers attached to them, and then you just hit a button and it sends this, this message. Interesting. So, uh, and you tried this out. At what point did it actually send the SMS? Was it outside of the screen? So the screen we're looking at now is one of the setup ones. So this is where you actually configure a, a parking zone where you enter in the, the number that you need to SMS to and how long that kind of covers you for. So once you've configured this, then on, on the very kind of like home screen, it'll show all the zones you've configured and the, for, the, for the car registration numbers you save. So the first thing you see when you open the app is you just hit that one of the zones you've, you've saved and it'll send the message and um, basically give you parking access. So this is one of the kind of setup screens you would go through in configuration. You have to do this step. So basically, you wouldn't use this on, a, on an everyday basis, right? So things like speed and like you know, in general, if you're using something on an everyday basis, you want to minimize the number of inputs, right? You want to make it quick and easy for the user to just you know fly through and obviously not make mistakes. But this is kind of an auxiliary screen, right, Nick? Yeah, I can imagine that you probably install this app and configure three or four parking zones which you commonly frequent. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's talk about what we would uh, change in this screen. So the first thing that jumped out at me was that um, there's a save icon. And in general, we, you know, barring the whole discussion of whether a floppy disk is actually a useful metaphor these days for save, um, you know, there's two ways to basically uh, leave the screen. Actually, three ways if you count the back button as well. And this is something that I recently posted about um, in a post about the done button. We'll talk about that in a moment. But basically here, I can press back or up or save to basically get out of the screen. And it doesn't seem to be a, it doesn't seem kind of like a, a specific affordance for discarding changes or reverting. That's a whole issue in itself. Um, but that was the first thing that stuck out to me, that there's, there's a lot of ways to save and get out of the screen. 
Um, the other thing mm -hmm. is that uh, just purely from a visual standpoint, uh, the blue action bar and the blue screen content didn't really mesh well for me. Um, generally, in, in this kind of app where you're entering data, lots of data, um, you want to you probably want to use like a lighter background. Um, I think the darker backgrounds, like a, a black or you know the hollow dark theme, those are best used for media apps like gallery or playing video. Um, and so when I'm entering uh, when I'm entering text or entering data, it seems like it's a better fit for a lighter theme. Um, the the darker color action bar, the blue action bar is fine for branding. Um, but that's just kind of one of the first things that jumped out. Uh, the second thing was around visuals, right? So you have labels here like name, uh, SMS number, uh, price, things like that. Um, so the problem there is that they're not really aligned with the content itself. So you have, I'm, I'm going to butcher this, uh, tariff break one, um, and then the SMS number, and they're not visually aligned with the rest of the text. So that was another thing. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to point out that uh, this color chooser seems a little simplistic. Um, you actually uh, can't tell this from the screenshot, but the background color is the currently selected color. Um, so if I touch yellow here, uh, it would actually change the background color of that to yellow. So that's, it's not a very common uh, way of indicating selection. Um, so with that, uh, Nick, any thoughts on the screen? No, you, you pretty much know that. I think they've basically taken the color palette from the icon and run a little bit too far of it in my book, especially mm -hmm. when they haven't customized the hollow control fields, where I find that the blue um, underline in the text boxes doesn't really contrast highly with the background color, it making it um, making the focus get lost a little bit. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And actually, I just want to make a call out since you mentioned that, Nick. Um, uh, someone, and I forget your name, I'm very sorry. Someone has actually recently created a, um, a generator for styling, for hollow styling. So you can just punch mm -hmm. in a few colors and you can generate all the different assets for, uh, for buttons, for text boxes, things like that. So if this developer you know, wanted to disregard our feedback about the light color and wanted to have a, a lighter um, color for the text field, the little bottom bar, uh, they could use the hollow, uh, I think it's called the hollow style generator. We'll link to that afterwards. OK, so let's, uh, let's jump into the, um, the redesign. So here's a redesigned version um, of that screen. Um, you'll notice immediately that we, we switched from using uh, save and up to a single done button. And this mirrors what you would see in the people app, for example, um, on Ice Cream Sandwich and later. Uh, so when you edit a contact, uh, you're presented with this similar kind of screen uh, for entering data. Um, the other thing we did here was that uh, we took uh, the, the, I guess, the city, the location, and we used, and this is, I think, one of uh, Nick and my favorite things to do, is turn it into a, a Roboto light, or actually, in this case, maybe even Roboto thin um, large text to indicate that this is the current um, general vicinity that you're working with, the zone you're editing is in Berlin. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that we, we realigned all of the labels. And actually, we removed the name label because it's almost self-explanatory that you're currently editing um, this uh, specific zone. Um, but we took all the other labels, like SMS number and period suffix, and we aligned them with the content. And this is something that is a little tricky to do with the framework currently, but um, it's something that you can actually do um, correctly with a couple of tweaks to your padding. Um, the other thing is that we dropped period suffix. Uh, so if you notice here, period suffix was to the right of SMS number. And that conveyed, to me at least, it conveyed a, a sense of uh, sequence. So that like the period suffix is almost the suffix to the SMS number. Um, and again, speak, this is coming from somebody that doesn't really know how parking in Europe works. Um, but uh, it, it, was kind of, um, it was kind of a weird connection to make, that period suffix was after, after SMS number. So we moved that down to the bottom. And then lastly, we, um, we made this uh, color changer. And I'll actually switch to the next slide. We had this color changer that when you touch it, it gives you a drop down of the different colors you can choose from. And then you can select uh, you know, which color you want to change to. And it shows a little blue rectangle around the currently selected color. And then it also lets you discard changes if you select the action overflow. Um, it lets you discard changes that you've made here. So um, that's a high-level summary of what we've done here. Uh, Nick, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, immediately for me, I find the uh, the light theme works very well for the data entry screen screens. It's very kind of easy on the eye to scan and enter quickly. Um, 
and just lining everything up for me makes just makes this this screen flow a lot more um, with a much better rhythm. Like uh, designers tend to talk about grids and patterns and rhythms and stuff like that, but basically it just means line stuff up and use a use the standard amounts of padding. I mean, as programmers, we can we can get on board with that kind of instruction, and it just helps make things really easy and quick to scan. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I wanted to call out for me as well, like um, one of one of the most important things in this kind of input screen as well is is using the appropriate um, input types. So this is a, um, a field you can set on your edit texts to hint to, um, to the system what kind of data is going to be input. So uh, you can say it's going to be a, a number field or a number of decimals or it's going to be you know a proper name where it might capitalize every letter. And I think that's really critical for making this, this screen like, flow very fast and make you very productive. So um, the developers not done too bad a job. They've set number type of input types in a couple of the fields, but not all of them. So I'd like to see those uh, used throughout. Yeah, very good point. I do want to just add on one little point to the line stuff up uh, point you made there, Nick. Uh, in a recent uh, Google I/O video, I believe it was Advanced Design for Engineers, uh, Christian Robertson, who's the lead visual designer um, for Android, uh, he mentioned this kind of concept of lining stuff up as part of the discussion of uh, Gestalt principles, or Gestalt principles, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but that was, that was kind of something that definitely stuck out. Line stuff up is a very, very kind of easy way to make things instantly look cleaner. I think that's where I borrowed the line from. <laughs> um, and I just want to echo again like the use of Roboto Light. Um, you know, typography can really, really help give structure and emphasis to your application. And I think this is a great example. Uh, of setting it like a header here, and and it really pops out really really nicely. Yeah, totally. Adam had a point about discard. Adam, what was that point again? Oh, just on the next screen, you've got discard and overflow. Oh yeah, yeah. So Adam is just pointing out that we also have discard, right? So in the previous screen, you there wasn't really an obvious way, or like you know when you press back or up, it's really up to the developer to decide what to do there. We don't have strong guidance on whether up or back should save. It generally should. Um, in cases where you have you know, really, really destructive operations, if save is a really destructive operation, like it posts a tweet or something or a, or a post to the entire world, you probably want to have some sort of confirmation or something. Um, but having that uh, discard in the action overflow gives that extra, extra sense of certainty as to what that action will do. So moving on to the last app, uh, we're going to look at London Bus Checker. Um, actually, Nick, since you're in London, um, do you want to just briefly talk about uh, what this app uh, will do for you? Yeah, absolutely. So it's a, an application to uh, find the nearest bus stops to you and um, tell you the routes of those buses and how, how long you'll have to wait until the next bus arrives. OK, awesome. So it's, it's basically exactly that, right? It tells you where, but it's, it's your guide to the bus system in London, effectively. Yeah, it ties into the system that you, you know, when you go to a bus stop, it tells you like five minutes to the next bus. So this can, uh, but not every stop has that. But apparently, there is information. So this this app's actually super handy around London to find out how long you're going to have to wait for a bus. Awesome. So I use it. I I paid for this app. I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, Nick is an avid user of this app. So let's see how we can you know, fi you know, fix this UI and not really necessarily fix, but improve. Um, so one of the one of the first things that I noticed was that. Um, this map dropdown, and this is the zooming is kind of wonky right now. Um, this map dropdown, this uh, spinner, is kind of off in its own place somewhere in the middle of the action bar. Um, I don't know if that's intentional or just because the logo is really wide. Um, but it, that's kind of like a weird place for it. Uh, also, the, uh, the logo here, the, the placement of the logo in the action bar, and the, um, the blue, I guess, hollow dark uh, border at the bottom of the action bar. Um, just seems kind of out of place, especially in, a, in such a visually rich app like this. Um, the other thing I'll note is that these, um, these buttons here kind of have styling from a different platform. Um, and you can't see this in the screenshot, but touching on the bubble doesn't actually do anything. To get into the, or to see the details for that stop, you have to touch on the, uh, this blue button here. And then this is basically a shortcut to see the bus route map. Uh, for that stuff. Um, yeah, just one thing to point is that the bus the bus route is actually one of the most useful functions of this application. You can you know rock up to a random bus stop and hit the route button and see exactly where that bus is going to take you. Uh, 
but I don't feel like that's at all conveyed by this button. It's this button on the left of the bubble and then repeated uh, the, in the split action bar at the bottom, the kind of three dots connected. Uh, it doesn't scream root to me. Maybe that's me. Yeah, and the other thing is that it just, maybe it's just me, but it resembles sharing. Uh, so the share action icon, and this is something that you know users of ICS devices no. especially are extremely familiar with share. It's used throughout the entire operating system. And the icon for share is basically this icon with filled circles and flipped horizontally. So it may just kind of convey that unintentionally. Um, so that's another thing that jutted out, right, was that it just, it seems like a, a version of share, but it's not. It's it's completely separate. It's a bus. Uh, it's a route map. And um, lastly, the the pins are straight straight off of another platform. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is that you, again, you can't see this in the screenshot, but uh, the bottom icons were blurry. Uh, they seem to just be either MDPI or HDPI resources. Um, you should really, and this is just you know for everybody out there, you should really provide XHDPI resources for your apps uh, because you know lots and lots of devices that are out now and coming out. Um, they have XHDPI screens. So, um, with that, any parting thoughts, Nick, on the current screen? No, let's go straight into the redesign. Okay, so the redesigned version is here. Um, and you notice immediately, and maybe I should just stop zooming and let the camera do its trick. Um, you'll notice that immediately here we got rid of the um, debranding up top. Um, and this is kind of controversial. A lot of folks may think, oh, but I want my brand to be visible at all times. Um, but you have to remember that this is an application that users use every day. If they're launching into your app, they probably know that they're using Bus Checker, right? So it's not necessarily it's not necessary to always show your branding. Sure, you can show an icon. Um, you know, if if icon if an icon represents your brand really strongly, then show it. Um, in this case, just to me personally, the icon was, you know, is very. It has a lot of different things going on in it, and so it doesn't seem like a great representation of the brand. And so what we did instead was we thought, maybe let's pick a strong highlight color, a strong accent color to represent the brand better. In this case, we just chose uh, kind of like a reddish pink. And you could see that um, in the action bar, uh, there's kind of this uh, reddish pink outline, um, underline. And then in, the, uh, in each of the uh, markers and the map, it also uses that color. Um, we also decided to show some additional branding in the background of the tab bar. Um, so basically, you see the TFL logo there. Uh, you probably you probably shouldn't use the TFL logo as is, but that's just an example of somewhere where you can put some sort of square-like branding. Um, additionally, uh, very quickly, since we're running low on time, uh, we put the um, the locate me button in line in the map, since that's kind of something that uh, users of Google Maps will be accustomed to. Um, we've also simplified some of the icons at the bottom. We've changed the icon for the route map to an actual map. And this is actually uh, based on some iconography from, uh, um, from, I'm blanking on his name. Oh my god. Nick. Gunther. Say again? Gunther. Gunther, Gunther yes, absolutely. Gunther. Uh, Gunther from Germany. Uh, I feel horrible, Gunther, if you're watching. Sorry for forgetting your name on, on the spot. Um, but Gunther's provided a couple of icons. I think they're called androidicons.com or something. Uh, he's provided a bunch of additional icons uh, in addition to the action bar icon pack. And so this is based on a map found there. And so this conveys a map of a route. And you can't really see it in the icon, but it's, it's kind of two points uh, with a route in between. And then lastly here, we, we changed this, um, this bubble, this pop-up bubble so that it uses a, a styling very similar to the Maps app. Um, and touching on the entire bubble will take you to the details, as opposed to having this kind of separate icon here. Um, and then there's this additional action button that takes you to, um, you know, takes you to the route map. So that's, uh, that's at a very high level, um, the redesign. Um, Nick, any, any thoughts? Yeah, one, one of my favorite uh, changes here is the use of the overlay action bar as well. I mean, I think that really, with the map application especially, really, really stands out that you get to see this kind of like whole larger canvas across the way. So I think uh, that works really well here as well. Yeah, and Adam pointed this out as well. So you can see here, what we did here was we used uh, a, not a black action bar, but it's, uh, I think it's like 111 or 222 uh, hex color uh, with opacity. So even setting the opacity to like 90%, and using it, like Nick mentioned, in overlay mode gives the feeling that the entire screen is really your canvas. The map moves across the entire screen. Uh, so that definitely helps convey a sense of 
um, a sense of you know content is in front of you and, and infinitely pannable, basically. Okay, so uh, it's eleven o'clock. Um, I think that that's it for this week. But um, before we uh, cut off, any uh, parting thoughts uh, from Nick first, and then I'll, I'll go after. No, well, uh, I, just, I hope that this format's working well for everyone. But I um, I think it's a really good way to demonstrate a before and after. It's a good way to demonstrate the strengths of um, designing for the platform and how you can really, really make your application feel right at home on Android and therefore feel easier to use for your users. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah, and I just want to mirror that. Um, absolutely, you know, if you if you do like the format, definitely, you know, provide us comments either on the event um, or in any of the related posts on the Google Plus page for Android developers. Um, and if there's anything you'd like to see changed or anything you'd like to see in the future uh, added or whatever, um, definitely let us know. This is, like we mentioned in the very beginning, this is a very new show. So we're still exploring different ideas, different ways of getting uh, design in your hands, design in action. Um, so yeah, let us know. And uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, and we'll see you next time. Uh -huh.